<coughs> the uh, last session we looked at just the way we uh, are related to the ground. Okay? And uh, we looked at those drills that we just did and the ones we did last week. Uh, it was pretty obvious that the dynamics of how our body moves and how an opponent's body moves is, is, is very, very different compared to what we're standing up. So then we're going to look at uh, how we defend ourselves. Um, so I'm going to stand up. Now, just this demonstrates pretty much stating the obvious. If I were to um, hit an example or push him or do something, he can just walk away. He can walk away. aggressive thing, he just uses his feet. But, if for an occasion where, as, not through his choice or through his choice, he was on the ground, so just sit on the ground, so your bum is on the ground. Okay, maybe I was on the ground, I was standing by, and I said, choose to hit him, what choice does he have? He can't bump, butt scoot his way out too quickly. Well, some people can, and then people can butt scoot very fast. <laughs> but for the untrained person, it's, it's not really an option. So all he has, what does he have? He has his arms and his, his legs to shield him. All right? So today we're going to talk about, thank you very much, we're going to talk about how we defend ourselves um, when we're under attack. Now, in, in sport Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, we only attack using um, uh, strangle holds around the neck and joint locks on the arm, shoulder, sometimes the wrist, sometimes the knee, sometimes the ankle, sometimes the hip, but mostly, mostly the arms. Right, so if you bear those in mind, today's lesson will be focusing on defending from attack, someone attacking your arms or strangling you, sometimes at the same time, which can be very annoying. Right, so I have the, the, I'm going to show you one technique, this technique you will use for white belt to black belt, and it absolutely works, because it protects you, your arms from being armbarred and your neck from being strangled, both at the same time, and you'll use this at your discussion, but for now you'll use it all the time. And that's this position. Take your hands, cup them around your throat, your neck, and your jawline. And most important of all, your elbows not flared out. They're absolutely hugged in as tight as you can to your, um, to your ribs. And we'll see everyone's position. Tuck your chin in a little bit, not too much so that you can't actually see what's going on. Okay, so you're just in, and this should be a relaxed position, you're not too tense, you should be quite relaxed, until the moment comes when someone's attacking you. Alright, so good, good, good. Good, 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 very simple. Okay, anyone know what this technique is called? I may have mentioned it in class. No, we call this the home alone. <laughs> so, you've seen the film, right? Okay, it's home alone. Oh, what's that? Okay, it's funny, but it's, it's a useful point to remember because you'll get coaches at times go, I'm alone! I'm alone! You're being attacked! And the person will suddenly remember to do this, and it's incredibly difficult for the opponent to strangle or attack the arms when you're doing home alone. And to illustrate the point, we're all going to pair them up. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, actually just sitting down. We'll start sitting down, and then we're going to practice home alone from all different scenarios. Uh, some you know, very, very legitimate, uh, threatening scenarios where somebody's just sitting on you. And trying to hurt you to more jujitsu sport oriented scenarios, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so, actually, uh, Jason, if you can you hold it for me? Your, uh, your partner will be just trying to prize open your hands. <laughs> and if he's successful, so if you just relax a bit, if he's successful, try to grab your throat. Okay. Word of warning please don't actually squeeze and hurt your opponent. This is simply a drill. To illustrate the concept, all right? And, you know, there are people passing out. So we'll just chuck you out anyway. And just kind of okay. So, but the point is that you're trying to strangle. Clearly, I can't strangle with there's hands in the way, all right? But look at these elbows. Look at that. I want that tight in, tucked in. Okay. So I want to prise the elbow away as well. And we'll illustrate why that's important later on. But guess what? You can't do both at the same time. If I prise the elbow away, that only increases the strength. I try to prise this away, that tucks his elbow in, right? So we're going to do that little thank you very much. Everyone understand um, the drill now? Any questions? Maybe you're happy, right? You just can't wait to start prising. <laughs> okay. So find a partner. Everyone had a go, yeah? Mm -hmm. Who found that it was fairly easy to extract the hand from the, the jawline? Or, they, or maybe not easy, but they had managed to do it. Yeah, a couple of times. Who found it that they had managed to successfully move the elbow outwards? Okay. Yeah, this was easy. But could you do both at the same time? No. And then completely no. move it outwards. Okay. So, um, 
The thing with the home alone is, if you are just simply defending right now, it could take one minute, it could take 30 seconds, it could take 10 minutes, but we'll get there eventually. Right? We'll just wait, yeah. But for the time being, it gives you time to think about the defense. Right? We're going to do this from a different position. Uh, see the more you so You're on the ground. So your back is on the ground. Your head is here, your feet are over there. We're going to do what I call the friendly strike in position. It has a detailed last week. Come down there so you can see. Um, no one ever sits patiently like as if you're a patient by the hospital or bedside now and then it proceeds to strangle you. Okay, I'll only teach you any self-defense classes. I'm not going to rip on them. Okay, you're going to do home alone for me. Good. Now my objective is, without putting weight on him, is to prise apart his hands or try to get a gap in the elbow here. See how his body moves as well? So that, that adds to my problem because as I'm pushing one, he's, he's kind of, yeah, Good. So we're going to play with that, just so you get used to protecting yourself, forming a shell, a barrier. Now at any one time, if I'm not punching, you can stick a knee in between me and you, and that great distance. And now I have to reach. So already you can see you're forming structure, you're putting things in place that make my job harder. Okay. Anyone understand that? So let's go again. How are you? So uh, on the ground here, back on the ground. Right, so I have a home alone filming. So when I'm in my friendly triangle position, I, on my knees on the ground and I'm on the side here, uh, as I'm trying to triangle and she is trying to get the knee into jam in the way, okay, I have an obstacle in my place. But also, another thing she could do is just shrimp, move your hips away from me, and she, I have to follow her. So that's the problem for you, all right? So she already knows instinctively to move the hips out of the way. We're now going to the next house where that's not possible because I'm going to sit, I'm going to pin her down much harder because she can't simply move out of the way. And the same thing again, I'm going to try and prize open their elbows, I need to find a gap, prize open my, my aim is to, if you just relax, is to get a hand on the throat. Okay, please don't really put pressure on the throat, just once you've got here, you've won, alright? So defend, home alone, you need to cover the carotid arteries, okay? So a little bit on the jawline. Okay, and palms together, just in case, we don't attack a windpipe in our walls, but just in case it's good practice to protect the windpipe as well by tucking down, tuck chin down, good. And you'll find, it's hard for you, but you know, you're basically, I've got all the time in the world to be doing this. I don't want to talk about that later, but I just want you to experience that. So if your partner's same again, one person sat on top of you, and up this, this position, and sat, your partner sat with your partner, and you'll be home alone. It's a very legitimate position for your judo, wrestling, or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's called taking the mat, quite simply. Uh, in sport Jiu Jitsu, it's considered one of the best positions to be in, mainly because he can't hit me or um, attack me in any way, but I have all the things capable of attacking him and creating pressure on him. All right. Be careful with this one. What you're going to do is you're going to do home alone, and your job is to extract the arms away. Okay. Using whatever means you can, because your prize, if we manage to, is to get a strangle. Okay, we're going to do strangles and things on a later lesson, not for today. But your prize is once you're here and you have the bare neck and the throat, you've won. Stop. Either carry on or stop around in your own time. Okay. So you're home alone, but you'll realise that home alone is incredibly strong. Person on the back, try and stay where you are in that seated position. Try not to twist your body in a manner where your shoulders are pointing in a different direction to your hips. That, weakening, that twisting of the spine is actually terrible for you, okay? and we'll talk about that later. But for now, try to be strong, be tense when you need to be tense. And I just want you to get experience of being a task where you can't really do much apart from just do the whole moment. Okay guys, new partners, just for a minute or so. Uh, let's move on, because uh, as we've ascertained, yeah, what, especially if you're in a bad position where somebody's taking your back or sat in your belly, um, they, they, they go all the time in the world to finally get through and expose your neck or your arm. So we need to escape. Right? Uh, and uh, what was this? Let me see. Uh, I picked two escapes from tracking scenarios that illustrate my point. Now, um, 
the, the thing with escapes is that uh, if you just uh, show me on the side. Okay, so last week we did an escape where we step out, and we put the knee in and we move away. I removed his arms from the, the, the my, my area that I'm being threatened with, right? But he'll just follow me. If I'm still on the ground, he's just going to keep following me. I need to, I need to remove the threat. All right? I need to put myself in a position that, um, where I'm no longer under threat. That's what I mean by escape. It's no use going, well, I've escaped. Because he's still here, and he's just going to carry on trying. And uh, whether the punches are, are, are in part of the equation or not, the point is, I haven't escaped, I've merely moved. So we're going to go in a, 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 a situation where, <coughs> uh, it, where we want to illustrate that technique. So you just sit on your bum and your feet over there. Good. And your head lock in. Okay. Yeah, this is the most unpleasant. Okay. Uh, any childhood playground fights would involve head lock. Okay, so the point I want to make is. Um, I, I need to escape, clearly, but simply as, as you know, moving the hips, yeah, I can move my hips, but he's just going to follow me, right? And I'm still under danger of, of really, really suffering from the pain. Plus, you know, he may punch me, should that occur, but even just a, in a grappling scenario, headlock, again, when he looks off, is, is really an unpleasant situation for me. Right? Remember this position, stay where you are, let my head go, Good. stay where you are, we're going to do we're going to do this to him. When he falls down. If, he's fall, if he falls down um, and I'm able to escape, then I can then attack him. <coughs> right. So remember that position. What we're doing is a lot of um, situations, back into the headlock, a lot of situations, for me to escape effectively, I am filling a space. All right. I'm filling a space. When I remove myself from that space, in theory, he'll just he'll he'll fill that space with his own body, i.e., fall down. Okay. So this is what we're going to do. It's from this simple headlock position, we're going to try and rotate and turn onto our knees and grab his shoulder. Here. Okay. Once we are here, we're going to turn onto our knees and see the space here now. He's going to fall down, and we're just going to stop here for now because the headlock's still on, but we need to work out. Alright, this way. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, uh, so you can see it, Stephen. So, head lock. Yeah, so, we're in this position, there's no punches or anything, my head is locked, his weight is sort of on me, but I still have freedom of movement. Okay. I just want to use this to illustrate the point where I'm, I'm taking away the space that he relies on to prop himself up. Okay. So from here, this is the technique we're going to do. I'm turning towards him, and what I want to do is get to my knees. Once I'm on my knees, I can then twist his body so he falls down where I was lying. And we're just going to end up here. And I'll show you part two in a minute. Okay, guys? I'm going to show it once more. Uh, I'm going to show you this. Okay. Now your arms are free. You can see your hands. All right. In this particular scenario. Grab the shoulder. Just, just so you have something to go on. And try and spin round and turn to your knees. Good. Once you're on your knees, you're going to pull the shoulder so he falls onto his back. All right, and we're just going to leave it there because it like, would be too many parts to, to teach you one day if you want to move this. Right. Some of you may have done this before, it's a very basic beginner's headlock escape, which you can just Google on YouTube, but we teach you about self defense classes. I want to illustrate the point, I'm, I'm replacing, well, I'm, he's replacing the space that I vacated. Okay guys, so pair up. Both hands are free, but it's not necessary. Uh, you could, for example, get a headlock where you have a hand on his head. Okay, it still works. All right. Well, just for um, let's all consistency sake, we're both on the available to us. All right. So in order for me to uh, turn to my knees, I need to scissor and face and grab the shoulder here. 
Okay. Um, if you find it hard to get to your knees from here, try moving outwards a bit. So the more distance you create, remember we're thinking about my hips. My hips are moving away from the source of danger. Then I have the ability to get into this knee position and walk into the ground. Now, with the headlock still on, just to, just to finish this technique, you can come around so you can see the action here at the night. If you do um, judo or Brazilian Jiu Jitsu or wrestling or any sort of ground fighting technique, this position here, your eyes will light up going, oh, fantastic. Okay. Anyway, I'll show you one. We need to get out of here. This is still very strong, this could hurt, but we, ha we now have something that we didn't have before, which was uh, leverage. Okay. By putting my hands on his jawline and stepping over, I have the ability to just release the arm. And later on in, 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 in lessons, we'll learn to. Take the arm and do arm bars from here. But for now, please don't do the arm bar. You're in this position here. You should all find yourself here. If not, um, then uh, shout, give me a shout and I'll find it. Two hands on the jaw. You don't have to press too hard. The point comes from stepping over. Don't just push up with your neck. Move towards his upwards here. You see how his grip releases? Grip on again. Well, combined with just a little pressure of your arm, it should release. And then you're in this more dominant position, and then you can tickle them. <laughs> <laughs> Did you want to see that? Um, it will be useful, yeah, actually. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, uh, <laughs> yes. So, anyway, we're here. I'm grabbing the shoulder here, and I'm using that that sort of opportunity where there's nothing to prevent me from dropping there. I'm in this headlock position, so you can just connect your hand. One hand over, I want to step over. Don't just pull up, because you're meeting force with force. I want to make the maximum of the weakest point of the grip here, which you'll achieve by moving towards the head here, and the grip will come off, and then you've got the arm. Peace sir. Okay? Good. Give that a go, I'll come around and uh, see how you do with that. Let's look at another way of escaping. Uh, so, you want in? That's okay. This is good for an experience as well. This one's on my, on my belly. Uh, sat on my belly, in that position. And we're going to do friendly strangle. Strangle, strangle. Okay, good. Now, the first technique. I was displacing a space and he fell into it, which allowed me to escape. This one, I have to move him into a space, but stop him from using his arm. That stops him. So if I were to bridge and throw him that way, his arm would instinctively be positioned. See? And the same on the other way. And at the same time, I haven't escaped my position. I haven't, and he's still a threat, whether he's punching or striking or whatever. Okay. So what we're going to do, this is the drill we're going to do, it's probably the simplest one you can do, and it's pretty easier than the previous one, I should have done with this one anyway. This is the point where you're taking away his ability to, um, what we call base out, using a structure that usually is his hand, and it could also be his foot. Okay, we're going to just hug one arm, hug. Okay, there's lots of other things to this technique, later on we'll, we'll learn the more technical version of this, where you put the shoulder break in the posture. But for now, your partner's just going to let you hug one arm. Can you see what his posture is like? The relief is, he's twisting his torso, and he knows that if I was going that way, it's very, I mean, he could use the other arm, but he's not going to, if, I, if you use the other arm, so if I could throw you that way, just use your other arm to base up that. It's good, but it doesn't prevent him from, okay, all right, so if you back in position here. So this is what we're going to do, all right? The most important thing also is not only are you hugging the arm, but you must block this foot. So everyone come around this side, see what I'm doing here. Because some people are really shifty, and when you push them towards one side, they just really, really just stick their foot out. And you haven't done anything apart from just roll. So you must drop this foot here, and we're going to hug the arm. This is, this is as simple as I can make them. Now we're going to rely on two things that we learned in lesson one and lesson two. Is hip bridge, no shrinking this time. But remember I said roll onto your shoulder, or rolling onto my shoulder. But this time you carry on, you carry on, you carry on. So we should be between the legs here and then so we'll go on. But we're out of danger. Alright. So um, you want to see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Jason. 
So do you remember from our um, the home alone thing? What do you need to do from home alone? I'm going to try to prize open my hand. Okay, fine. Now I've got the hand. Good. I kind of I kind of tricked him into it by doing home alone. Anyway, block the foot. Very important. Bridge and roll onto your shoulder. And even if he uses this hand to put over there to stop him from it will not prevent him. Immediately position yourself in what we call the posture. We'll talk about posture in another, another lesson, but basically I just want to be here, not here, ready to be strengthened and chosen to. I need to be here. Yeah. Once more. That's all melt. Yeah, let's do home. So we're in home alone, and he wants the prize open. We're using the opportunity. Okay, it's not five bucks for He's letting me use that chance for me to hug, hug his arm. Just one arm, please. All right. Lock the foot on the same side, you're trapping the arm. Please don't flare your elbows out, keep your elbows close. Hips raised. And just roll. Here, immediately position yourself so you're out of his reach. Okay guys, everyone got that? That's the last thing we're going to do today, but um, we need to drill it.